Hello! Welcome to a coding challenge. In this coding challenge, I am going to make an animated sprite. This is actually a page on my website. I have a website, yes, thank you very much. Um, a, with an example that I made apparently seven years ago. Uh, you can download the code for this. Uh, it's made in processing. Um, and it is uh, loading a sequence of images and playing those images in sequence in multiple places at different speeds to create this running person thing across the screen. So I'm going to try to do something similar. I'm going to do it in P5. So I'm going to look at what does it mean to load a sprite sheet? What is a sprite sheet even? To chop up that sprite sheet into lots of little images and then to play those images as a sequence and make an animated sprite class that you can use. And this is a very common technique used in games and all sorts of other stuff. So let's get started. Now, thank you to Dragon Z P. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> who suggested that I use this wonderful uh, image sequence of a running horse, which comes from opengameart.org. Uh, this is under uh, Creative Commons license, uh, so, so I need to attribute it, it, which I'm doing right now. Hello, I'm using this, but I can, uh, so you can find a lot of free and open um, uh, uh, art that you can use here. So I'm going to use this. Um, if, you, if I were to click here and just download the assets, we would see that it would actually come as separate images, which I find to be very nice, because I like to load them one at a time. But what is actually often done and more efficient is to actually, and I have this right here, to uh, load a single image. So this is what's known as a sprite sheet. A sprite sheet is a single image that has each frame of an animation for that sprite. First of all, why is it called a sprite in the first place? Look at this. In the category of you learn something new every day, the term sprite was first used in the graphic sense by one of the definers of the Texas Instruments 9918A video display processor. I'll let you continue to read this interesting Wikipedia page about the history of sprites. But the way that we think of sprites today, and in particular a sprite sheet today, is multiple frames of an animation within a single image. And this here is a PNG image, so it has transparency. So if I were to go, I should just go to the desktop and open this up. You can see it right here. Here it is again. So what is it that I want to do? What I want to do is load this image. I want to get each frame out of it, and then I want to show them one at a time in sequence. So this is not necessary, but uh, again, thank you to Dragon who uh, submitted this also uh, uh, sent me a JSON file. So this is actually quite convenient. This is a JSON file that actually has the information about where each frame of the sprite is in that image. It has its x, y, and its width and height. Now it turns out this is really just a grid, so I could probably just do this mathematically very easy, easily, but this is sort of nice that I can maybe load this in. So let's get started with this right now. So first thing I want to do is I am going to write a preload function. I'm using, again, the P5 library. And preload allows me to load media assets before the program begins, sort of saves me from callbacks and promises and that sort of stuff, which is useful, but I don't, I don't need that right now. So I'm going to say uh, let sprite sheet be the variable for the image, and let sprite data be the variable for the data. So I'm going to say sprite data equals load JSON. Uh, and what was that called? It's called a horse.json. I've done something horrible here. And then I'm going to say sprite sheet equals load image horse.png. Just to make sure everything's working, let's draw the sprite sheet to the canvas and in setup, Let's console.log the sprite data. So this is the first step. I, and again, this is a bit of over, this is, this is a lot of extra stuff. I, I, you know, I could just load a bunch of images or I don't necessarily need the JSON file, but this is nice. I like it. I like it. <laughs> okay. So let's go back. Oops. And of course, everything's gone wrong. So it couldn't get horse.json and it couldn't get horse.png. Why? Because it's in a folder. I always forget this. I put it in a folder called horse. So I need to add the directory path to the images. There we go. So we can see this came in. So I definitely have the data there, right? I have the position and the name of, of each element. And then why don't I see, ah, 
<laughs> so I'm trying to draw the image and I completely forgot. If I'm going to draw the image, I've got to say where to draw the image. And I'm going to draw it at 0, 0. There we go. OK. So next step. What I want to do now is I don't want to just display the entire sprite sheet. I want to display each piece of it one at a time. So let me go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable. And I'm going to say let animation equal an array. So the array is going to be each frame, an image for each frame of the animation. So assuming I have that data, I can see if I look at the JSON file, right? Uh, once again, all of, the, all of the data is in a JSON array called frames. So I'm going to say, sorry, back into the code. I'm going to say let frames equal sprite data dot frames, I don't know if that's totally necessary, for let i equal 0, i is less than frames.length, i plus plus. And then I'm going to get, sorry, I'm going to look at the JSON again. And now for each one, I want to know about the position. This x, y width and height is what's important to me. Uh, I'm having trouble. Um, so I want to say let pause equal frames index i dot position. And then now, pause has all of the stuff in it for grabbing a particular image. So watch, I'm going to say let image equal sprite sheet, and I'm going to use a function called get. So get is a function in the P5 library that allows you to get part of an image. I could get a single pixel, I could get the whole image, I could get a section of it. And in this case, what I want is this section of the image, the x and y with a particular width and height. Then what I want to do is just put that into that array. So now this is really all I want to do is loop through every frame, grab it out of the sprite sheet. Now again, a convention might be, this is one way of doing it, which, I, which arguably might not be the quote unquote best or most efficient way. You can actually just leave everything in a sprite sheet and later I could just be like, when it's time to draw stuff, I could pull stuff out. But I'm choosing to in setup, just pull out the sections of the image. And I'm going to console log that array now. And we can see I have an array with seven images in it. So now if I were to say draw image animation index 0, that's all I see is that one. If I were to say draw animation index 2, I see that one. So this is working. And guess what? Animation frame count, whoop, and then can't read a uh, uh, property width of undefined. So you saw it for a second there, and then it went away. Why did it go away? Well, it went away because there's only seven images there. So I could say modulus animation.length. Um, now, somebody, uh, I got this great YouTube comment the other day saying that I'm saying modulus and modulo incorrectly, and I don't remember what it was. Okay, I found the comment. The operator's called modulo, and the number following it is called the modulus. Okay, and Golan Levin came on the coding train and did a guest video about that operation. But what this operation does for me in the code right now, the modulo operation, is it gives me a modulus value that's always between zero and the end of the array. So it's the remainder of division. So this frame count modulo animation.length, watch what this does. Now I see that animation repeating. And look at that. Look at it. It's the horse. It's just running and running and running and running and running. Great. So I completed part one, but I'm going to just keep going. This is one video of this coding challenge. I've got the animation playing it out. But here's the thing. What I want to do now is I need to figure out some way of encapsulating the idea of this animation into an object so I could then make many of them. So what I'm going to do to do that, and I think what I want to do, I think I want to make a new JavaScript file. I'm going to call it sprite.js. Um, and I am going to, uh, in index.html, I need to make sure that I refer to it. And then in sprite.js, I'm going to make a class called sprite. And then when I create this, what, what, when I create the sprite with a constructor, I want to give it a few things. I want it to have a speed and I want it to have it, I'm going to give it like an animation. So uh, basically that animation will be uh, the sequence of images that it's supposed to play. And then it's also going to have a speed, which is like how fast 
does it play it through? So the idea here being that now uh, I can say, let me just do a variable called horse. And I'm going to say horse equals a new sprite with these frames of animation and a speed of one. And then here I'm going to say horse.show. And maybe I want to say something like horse.animate. So like our next frame or something. I don't know what would make the most sense, but I'll just call it animate right now and I'll put it after. So this means if the idea of this sprite, if I want to show it and animate it, in the sprite class, I need a show function and I need an animate function. Now, if I'm going to have a show function, uh, that's basically going to be exactly this. But the point here is that I want to get away from using frame count. And so what I want is to have another variable that just keeps track of the index, like where am I in the animation? So I can use that instead of frame count, this.index. And this, by the way, has to be this.animation.length. And this has to be this.animation.length. And you know what? It would be really nice to have a length variable, I think, because I'm going to probably need that a lot. So let's just make it, um, that just like makes the code a little bit nicer to look at. All right, so this should work. And then in animation, I just say this.index plus plus or plus equal this.speed. So the idea here is speed is controlling the speed of the animation. So I've basically taken the idea, I've created an object that has stored in it an array of images. That's the animation. It has the length of that array. It has speed, how fast should it cycle through them, and where is it currently? So now, if we run this, uh, <laughs> and I've got some error here. Uh, Sprite.js line 10. This.animation, this.index. So let's just, let's just look at some stuff here to see what's going on. Oh, animation is one. Oh, I put things in the wrong order. Ah, this is a very common programming error. Look at this. I was, I was doing this quickly, and in here I say horse equals new sprite animation comma one. So and the image sequence is first, the speed number is second, and in here I put the speed first and the animation second. So I gotta reverse those orders so that they match, and then there we go. We're fine now. So I've got to where I was before, but the interesting thing here is that now, guess what? This sprite can have an X. And it can have a Y. And so it could be, uh, basically, I could be drawing it at this.x, this.y. So then when I create it, I could say I want it at 100, 100, comma 1. Now it's there. This leads me to be able to say, OK, now I want to have horses. I want to have a bunch of horses. I'm going to say 4 let i equal 0, i is less than t uh, 5, i plus plus. Uh, horses index i is a new sprite at a zero comma uh, i times 50. And then I want to say four, I'm going to use a for of loop, let horse of horses, and I'm going to go through all those and show and animate all of them. So now, look at this. I've got a whole bunch there. They're all right there together. Maybe I want to just space them out a little more. I could be thoughtful about the math of this. Um, oops, I must not have saved. There we go. So this is good enough for right now. I've got a whole, I've got a bunch of them, but look at now, here's the thing. What if I don't want them all to be matched up at the exact same speed? What if I were to say, let's make the speeds random. So let's make the speeds random somewhere between 0 0.1 and 1.2. I think that's actually the fastest speed, that, that number one. So let's do that. What happens? All right, I immediately get an error. 
What is the error that I get? It cannot read property width of undefined sprite.js line 12. Well, the issue here is by definition, if I go to sprite.js line 12, look at this. This.index modulus this.length. This works just fine if the index is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, if it's a whole number. If it's a whole number, it can apply the modulo, so I said it wrong again, operation, and it gets another whole number, which is an index into an array. Arrays only have whole number indices. But if I start saying plus 0.2 or 0.3, I'm going to get these numbers that aren't valid indices into an array. Well, this is actually quite fixable. And let's just do this. Let index equal floor. So all I need to do is floor this dot index before I apply modulo. And then I can put that in here, right? So floor is an operation that just eliminates the decimal point. I want the index itself to go up slowly by a decimal point, but I only want to show, you know, I have fewer frames. I want to show the same frame a bunch of times. So it's, if it's 0.2, it's going to take five frames for it to get all the way up to the next whole number. If it's 0.1, it's going to take 10 frames. So this should do the trick now. And we can see, look at this, they're all going at different speeds. And they're running in place. I might as well have them move now, right? So why not also have them move this.x plus equal this.speed? And maybe the speed that they're running doesn't really feel right. So even though it's the speed of going through the index, I probably should increase that by a scale of like five. Let's try that. This looks a bit more realistic. Now I have, it looks like they're sort of moving at speed. And then I could obviously do something like if this.x is greater than width, then I want to say is this.x equals uh, negative, I want to kind of put them off the screen. Negative uh, this dot animation index zero dot width. So I'm just pulling, I, you know, it might make sense for me to make that a variable. Like this dot w equal uh, uh, this dot animation index zero. Uh, you know, this is assuming all the images have the same width. And that way I can just say put it off screen here. So let's run this one more time. And guess what? I now have, I believe, a recreation of that example that I made where I have a bunch of horses all moving at different speeds through the animation. Um, and you know, now the world is my <laughs> digitally simulated virtual reality oyster, so to speak, in that I could, I could grab any sequence of images. I could have different sprites have different image sequences. I could start designing the background. I could have them, you know, I could apply physics to the way that the the, the XY position moves around the screen. I can start having collisions. The point is that anything that you've, anything that I've made in all my nature of code or other coding challenges that have an object moving around the screen, the simple games, this would allow me to have an animated sprite. And I might even further want to encapsulate the idea of a sprite. Oh, this would be a great place for me to talk about inheritance. So I could then make other objects that extend, that's an inheritance term, sprite. So I could make horses that are animated sprites or frogs that are animated sprites or uh, puffins. And puffin doesn't really do that. So I, I could, that's, so anyway, I'm a little bit off the, off, off the rails here in my discussion. Let's think about this. What, what, what could you do? Now one thing is, what would happen if I gave it a negative speed? I think mine would break. So this is a little challenge to you. Could you make this work with negative speeds? Right, it breaks. So this example that I made doesn't support going through the animation backwards. So try to add that. Could you make something like this that has different animations for each op? So there's maybe five things, but they're different. Each one has its own animation sequence. Could you do that? So could you design your own sprite sheet? So don't even do any code, make your own sprite sheet and run it with this code exactly. So there's so many things you could do, please. Um, Share with me in the comments on Twitter or at the link to the coding challenge URL um, in this video's description. There's a way you can submit any versions that you make on your own. Um, thanks for watching this coding challenge animated sprite.